Hi, Carol here. A huge welcome to my craft room. And I was excited to get this order. I ordered this kit over on Hedgehog Hollow, and it's an exclusive edition from Little Darling Rubber Stamps that you can get over on Hedgehog Hollow. If they still have some of the kits available, I'll leave a link. And you get fabulous little mini hybrid inks. They're Key Lime Pie, Lala Lavender, Pink Tutu, and the Raven Black. And what I love about, I think my favorite inks are hybrid inks because they're kind of in the middle of a dye ink and a pigment ink. So you're able to emboss because it doesn't dry instantly like a dye ink. It has that time limit, yet it is archival, it's non-fading, and it's acid-free. They, they don't bleed. They're absolutely wonderful. And they're safe on watercolors and alcohol markers, which we all love. If you can find an ink that can do all that, that's fantastic. And you will find that in Little Darling Rubber Stamp archival inks. So in this kit, I had a piece of vellum. I had some white cardstock. I think there was four, six pieces of white cardstock and some colored cardstock here. And what I liked about that, it was like really shiny and yummy. And I put it on the vellum on top of that. I'm going to try and use one of everything. I ate this already. <laughs> Hunter, my grandson, had the purple one, and I am just going to mow into this. Say you're going to get some yummy products. You get yummy products. <laughs> and for those of you that love my long tutorials, well, this tutorial's for you. And the reason why I kept it, it was 22 and a half hours of editing. I brought it down to the 1 hour and 48, 49 minutes, somewhere in there, because I used all the elements in different ways. I colored them. Look at the dyes there that match. They're gorgeous. And this is really nice too. It is the dye that's an envelope dye. And what I love about the Little Darling Rubber Stamp dyes is the fact they're Teflon coated. Everything just comes right off. It's amazing. And uh, it's not coming off the glue for me here. <laughs> Oh, they're tacked down. They're not going anywhere in the mail. But look at this. You get the envelope, and this I used as a money envelope, you know, for a money gift. And the heart is so unusual because it has the little edges out on the side. I love that. And the two side pieces are for the closed panels right here. And then you get two arrows and the top portion of the fold when you have that uh, envelope. There was 12 beautiful cards, two, 12 from two sets. So you had Perfect Pretty and Country Friends. And I used, most of them were the uh, more vintage style um, card stock patterns. You will see them as they come up. Some are bright and summery, and here we go, like that one and this bottom collection. So I used the second collection, which I think is the Country Friends. I'm not sure I didn't have it down there, but I did use mostly all of these. And they're six by six, and the thickness, and you know I'm really fussy about the thickness of the papers I use. Well, Angie, oh, the designer and owner of Little Darling Rubber Stamps, went all out when she designed her six by six papers. They are fabulous. They're thick. The designs are wonderful. I can't say enough about it. I've always been a fan of Little Darling Rubber Stamps. One, because they're rubber. They started out rubber. You get the cleanest, uh, clear, crisp image when you stamp from rubber stamps, opposed to, I would say, the photopolymer. Uh, but I am a fan of both. You know, the photopolymer I like because you can see through it, obviously. But as far as crisp, crisp images, you aren't going to get any better than the Little Darling Rubber Stamps. So enough said. I'm going to fold this all up and we're going to get into my super long but very informative uh, tutorial for you today. And I thank you very much for joining me. 
So what I did here is I grabbed the Tim Holtz platform. You know I like this one because I can take the lid off, turn it around, set it down in view of the camcorder, and I can use the Black Raven Hybrid ink. This is amazing, and it doesn't smear. I can watercolor and I can use my Copics. I mean, you can't ask for anything better. I can emboss because it's a hybrid ink. And uh, if I had my preference, I love over dye inks and pigment inks. I like the middle, the middle one. And uh, it, they kind of say, you know, the sayings out there that if a dye ink and a pigment ink had a baby, you would have a hybrid baby because it's in the middle. It doesn't dry that quick, but yet it doesn't stay on top as long as a, as a pigment ink does. So anyway, moving on. Now I'm going to set that aside to build my card base on a thick white card base. It's six and a half by six and a half, one piece. And the next piece is sit, you add a, another quarter of an inch at the top of the second piece because you're going to make your own card base, right? So you need this quarter of an inch, but you need to make a gusset on this. So take your six and a half by six and a half inch sheet and where it comes to the top, score it down uh, the entire length. And then go back and move it over a notch to make a gusset because you're going to add bulk inside there. So you need to have a tiny bit of room. So I just add an extra line off the scoreboard and I grab some sixteenth of an inch tape and I'll put it on both sides because we have right here a quarter of an inch to lay down and you're going to set the next piece on top of this so watch how I do that but you want the gusset to remain you need that room so when you put your next sheet down after remove the tape you're going to set that piece on underneath right like this and then put it on like let me just right up to the edge here let me just show you I, I thought I'd do it the other way here it just seemed to come you know I didn't have to deal with the tape as much and now you have the gusset on the top like that yet it's perfect because we scored it the extra quarter of an inch now we're going to need side panels right so I'm making sure that I cut the side panels off and um, I wouldn't be too concerned if they meet in the middle if you want that look mine does not meet in the middle because I put extra bulk on it but if you don't put any bulk on the edges like I do you can match it perfectly by setting them down you know if it's six inches you know each panel is going to be three inches by six inches right so um, yeah and I did that three inches by six inches except for I added bulk so they don't close flush you know, you still have the same amount of real estate on your card. You just uh, have a little bit more bulk because I put sequins on it. But we'll move on to that. I got my T-square ruler and I'm making sure that I have my um, die cuts. Now, these are the die cuts that go with the envelope. And I want to make a shaker. And I thought I'd make a small shaker in the middle. And then I changed my mind. I'm going to make a shaker down both sides and you know I usually do this on my cards if I'm going to make a shaker element I like to make shakers in unusual places so I'm going to add some of my tape and then I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine and bring it out and I think you're going to love this look because this these are the flaps that we're creating with uh, the die from um, the die set that we have here and that's the little darling rubber stamp die that goes with the little Winnie and her dog so here we go I'm going to make sure they meet that's why I have the pokey tool there just setting it down so that it doesn't move I'll put some tape down and make it flush across so that we have matching elements for our shaker and then you're going to see through with uh, acetate and I'm going to put down glass glitter. Now I'm going to take this uh, press and seal. I'm going to put it down over top right here of the die cuts before I take it out. I just wanted to show you something you could do. 
If you put this present seal down underneath and then you take out all the gut pieces of your die and it's going to go down below and it's going to stick to that present seal. And if you want to not do a shaker but yet you want to put those pieces back in to the die cut piece on your flap, it's going to work perfectly. And I kept this in because that I thought of that, of taking the beautiful hybrid ink and going over it in an ombre look and I'm going with the La La Lavender and the pink tutu and I'm going to sponge that and I thought you know what maybe I'll put the gut pieces back in in the colors of the uh, papers that I'm using but then I thought no you know what I want to have acetate I want to see the glass glitter and I thought it was a beautiful element for this card but this is a beautiful technique if you want to do this and you know while you're running it down have a piece of paper handy to go down the side and uh, I love these little minis and I, I could say it a hundred times I love hybrid inks and these colors match gorgeously look at that and it's it's really not a uh, it blends together let's put it that way it, it really isn't that ombre look of the same color but it did blend itself well and there you have all the gut pieces on the press and seal to use later they don't get lost and if you want to do that technique I kept it in there for you so that uh, if you want to do this to any die cut you can do this technique with ease and then you set it aside they don't get lost and we'll move on to what I'm going to do for you today with this uh, little darling rubber stamp Hedgehog Hollow and it is the uh, special edition kit. As you notice I've already distressed around the edges of this and I am going to add the um, La La Lavender around the edges as well just to move the color down. You're not going to see much of it and once I put this sheet of paper over top. So I cut this down. I'm going to distress the edges on this because it is more of a vintage style card. Um, it's a every side card so you'll get to see four cards in one video so then I don't feel so bad <laughs> because it's so long you're getting four cards in one card yeah then I took the vellum I'm gonna rip this so I have some jaggedy edges so I gave myself room as I cut it so that I can rip it off like just tear it nice and jaggedy and uh, if you cut it too short all you do is cut it down the center and move it over because I'm going to have another sheet placed on top of this. So no worries if you don't get it just right. I want it to hang off just a tad and then I'm going to use my homemade gesso with a little bit of the hybrid ink and show you how beautiful it mixes together. Hybrid inks mix with your uh, paste of any kind. So uh, I wanted to show that in this video. And I'm keeping everything as clean as I can. <laughs> Vintage and clean, they don't go together. Clean and simple cards, yes, that goes together. But uh, here's the beautiful inks. And I just wanted to show them off because they are stunning. And I have to say I did rip that fairly nicely, didn't I? And before I put this piece on, I'm going to distress it. Look at that. Works perfectly. But I didn't... I wanted to bring out the flowers because this is my focal point right on the front of the card. So I took out some of my Prisma pencils and I went over all of the edges, like all of the um, leaves, the stems, and the flowers. And you don't have to, I just took two pencils, you know, to get, to, uh, you know, a light tone, a dark tone. You, you really don't have to go crazy because the image is already basically colored in for you with the light tone. So I'm showing you the, the shades that I use for pencils and I will make sure they're nice and sharp. You know I like my pencils nice and sharp when I'm coloring and I add a little bit of texture and just fill it out so it looks a little bit uh, popped off the page so to speak. But I do like it if it wasn't colored in, you know, to have that faded vintage look. I like that. But because, like I said, it's my focal point, I wanted to give it an extra oomph. And coloring your images on paper can bring paper 
way up to a different level as you can see here I mean it's almost like you colored that yourself on there when really it was the brain power of uh, Amy Hunt with uh, Little Darling Rubber Stamps that did design this. So let's get a good close-up on my texture paste. There it is. I put down the Lala Lavender, mixed it up with an old paint brush, and I'm just going to brush over the already distressed edges there that I had. And uh, yeah, whatever you want to do, just go for it. And it looks nice. Then I clean up the, you know, you always have to clean your lid because otherwise it will stick and you won't get it off the next time you want to use it. <laughs> and you can see the little spots. I only did six little edges. That's it. That's why I didn't keep it in there. There's just six edges, as you can see, because once I add some tool to the outside of this, just to give it that little vintagey look, I wanted to have something else hanging off the edges. Of course, that's what I do. So now when I make up my mind, yes, Carol, this is what you want to do. I took my dollar store foam, you know, where nothing's a dollar, and I buy those pieces, and I like the fact that it was pink. I like it lifted up a little bit. I buy the foam that one side has the sticky on it, and the other side doesn't, so I do have to use my double-sided tape, but that's fine. It raises it up just the right amount that I like it. I don't want to use double-sided foam. It lifts it up too high. Now, in a lot of cases, I like to add some tape to the back. So I put some liquid, excuse me, liquid glue on top of the tape to give me a little bit of extra uh, goodness there. And then I'm going to add a little bit of tool down right here, cutting it off. And I'm going to lay it on top of this tool and we're going to get a really nice look of shabby chicness and vintage and here I go with some liquid glue I'm going to put it down there yes I'm trying to get my muscles working and I'll put it over top of the tape and that just makes my mind at ease that it's not going to come off anytime and not if I can help it and especially if you're sending it in the mail you want to make sure that it's all down nicely so here we go. We're going to add that to the side. Now, you're going to need to make another gusset, right? It has to go around the curve of the six and a half by six and a half card base. So I made two small gussets of, you know, one line over the other line. So it'll be a sixteenth of an inch. Then I'm going to wrap that because you have the fold in it. So you're going to take it and wrap it around and you're going to have a tiny little gusset so that it swings its doors nice and easy and that's what you want. So now I'll put the double sided tape, the liquid glue and then I'm going to work off the side, determine which side, stand it up and I, that's the way I like to do it because then you're working from the top, you're not uh, working from the side, take your bone folder, piece of paper whatever and secure it down and look at you're on your way to the first part and don't worry if you get ink all over your card because you are going to cover every side and that's what I do with my cards so we've got one half done and then I want to show you what I decided to do here now um, I am securing it down again on this portion right because you want to stick it down to this uh, open portion. So I put some double-sided tape down and then we're going to secure it and move on. Isn't that pretty? I just love the way the inks blend together. But because it's going to be a shaker, I need to add my acetate here. So I'll mark it on the spots that I need to cut it. I'll cut it off right there. The black marker is kind of nice because then, you know, you can see it well and you can cut it nicely. Um, you don't want to put it way over on the fold. Keep it away from the fold of your card. Otherwise, it won't bend as nicely because of the thickness of the acetate. But you do want to put it close. And there you have it. We're going to put it on, but not before I get some more sixteenth of an inch double-sided tape 
We'll put it secure around the edges, around the middle, and that's about all you need to secure the acetate before we put the thicker portion down of the tape, like the scotch tape. Before we put that to raise it up to put our shaker bits in, you're going to want to make sure your acetate is secure. Now you'll add the acetate onto the glue pieces. Then we're going to put the scotch foam too high, like double it up. And it won't be too high, but it'll be too high. Yeah. And now here it comes, double-sided tape. So the one good thing about double-sided tape, it does lift it up to put the shaker bits in, but you have a delicate die cut like this, you're going to have to cut that nice and thin. Once we get all the double-sided tape set on top of the acetate here, I'm going to make sure that I put the little glitter chunks in there, but also I'm going to have some butterfly paper the size of that opening, and then I will put the uh, foam you know, this foam right here, <laughs> my dollar store foam that you peel off the back, it's really sticky. It gives you that nice lift, like I said, and uh, it's wonderful to use if you watch for it. Now I'm going to make sure I do the score marks for the other side flap. So you can see how I'm taking it over one line. Very dangerous move here. <laughs> I should have butted up against there you know, you take a risk of sliding over into the next groove, but hey, I'm a risk taker. There we go. Put it down there, Carol. Yeah, you only have to go six inches, so that's not too bad. Oh, no, six and a half by six and a half. So now we have the two, actually, two little score marks, each one line over. Then we're going to fold it up, and then we have our tiny little gusset so that flap can move back and forth. Isn't it wonderful what you can do with cards? I just think it's gorgeous. Just like these roses, simply gorgeous. Now I took a piece of this other delicious paper and it had the little butterflies on it. So I distressed the edges. I took my Lala Lavender ink, that beautiful hybrid ink. And I went around the edges there because I want the inside to look as nice as the outside. But I wanted this clean piece, just like this, to be on the side, the inside. See how I did that? I set it down before I put the foam down. And you can see all the layers, the glass glitter, and it showcases the paper off beautifully. So we'll start with showcasing the paper. And I'm going to do this on the inside. I'm going to fussy cut, which I did, all the little uh, pieces of uh, butterflies on that other sheet. Remember I, remember I had two? Well, I just took my scissors and cut out every little butterfly right down to the eensy teensy one. And then I'm going to put the glaze over top of the butterflies. That'll give them stability once they dry. But it's also going to hold this beautiful glass glitter. And I'm going to put it on so all the petals will shine when you open up the flaps. And I think it's wonderful that you can, um, you know, have this ability with the paper to not only showcase it flat, but to cut it out. And I made, uh, I also took out my beads and I made this teacup stick pin. And that's going to be applied to the project as well. It's going to have every element that I could think of with this showcasing Little Darling Rubber Stamp uh, papers, images and I'll leave all the links at the end of the video and to Hedgehog Hollow for Alexander putting out this special edition box that I purchased and it was well worth it and I'll leave a link to that so you can check out and see if there are any boxes available and we'll go on look at I'm just finding all the matching butterflies it's kind of fun and it also gives you the dimension, the 3D wonderful dimension that I like to have on my cards. And you have the shaker on the front, you have the butterflies underneath the diamond glitter, the, the same paper except for you cut out another piece and you make the butterflies for the inside of the flap. And you have layer upon layer 
of wonderfulness on this four-sided card which is actually one, two, three, four, five, six sides I did on this card. So uh, you'll forgive me for the long time, but it's like uh, somebody getting on and doing six cards all in one video. So anywho, thank you very much. I know many of my subscribers like my long videos. Uh, they like to sit and have a tea or five of them, and, you know, <laughs> dinner, <laughs> whatever, and join me in my craft room. I feel like I know my subscribers very well. Um, so anyway, to all my subscribers, thank you very much for your patience in watching this tutorial. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the right hand side as I did to the left, but I'm not going to put you through the agony of watching it all. I'm just showing you that I did showcase this piece. The only thing I changed up is I put different butterflies on this flap, altogether different, like a totally different piece of that wonderful paper. And I wanted to showcase as much of that box as I could. And that included picking out um, the different papers. So here, once I dust off the top of my um, glitter, my glass glitter, I'm going to put it in bountifully as you can see, because that will shake very well. And I'll put the acetate on it, uh, and then I'll put that other butterfly paper on it first, uh, right there. The acetate, then the butterfly paper, and then my foam, in that order. And then you just cut around it with your scissors, and you're off. Yeah, look at that. So I'll have one for one side and one for the other. Can't get any better than that. Now, once I seat each side on the fold right here, I want to do the inside flap. Now, this flap will not flap forward. It will go back as a stand to hold up the back portion of the card. Now, you would think you'd open these two and it would stand up, but I didn't want that. I wanted to have this sheet of paper right here. I want to put it on the inside of both score marks, right? So you measure between the score marks because it has to slide nicely. I'm going to take it up a quarter of an inch and score it so that I have a score mark to fold over. And I'm going to cut it down so it matches the 6x6 six six with a quarter inch on the top. Then I'm going to seat it so that the ins, that back portion of the paper, the fold will be right there coming to the inside of the card. You're not going to do it the other way around. This way, the back will be like a uh, holding station for the card. It'll, it'll be like um, a card in itself, so to speak. So this is, uh, yeah, it's exactly, you know, sometimes when I create, when I saw this box, I knew what I was going to do with every single piece almost instantly. It just, uh, it works that way sometimes. Sometimes you fight to put something together. I'm just taking an eraser to rub off the marks that you make when you uh, measure. And now I'm just going to clean up a little bit of the glue there. And uh, yeah, then now we have that other piece seat on the back. And look at that. Isn't that wonderful? I love this look. I love this look. And I love the fact I get to decorate more white space. <laughs> so here's the other side of the flap, altogether different sheet of paper. And the butterflies are bigger and they have a different pattern. And it's beautiful. You know, I only had to put four or five of them on there. I put the same glitter and one side has the teensy weensy little butterflies. The other side, they've matured. And they're large. <laughs> At the same time, you're showcasing each technique is the same on each card. It's just the pattern that's changed. Now, I had some of the sequins, the roll of sequins. And to my amazement, every time you moved the card in a different position, it had all three colors that I used in the inks, the little ink cubes there. So that was amazing and just enough space to hide the double-sided tape. You know I like to do that. I find try to find all different ways to add a little bit of elegance in between the cards so you don't see it if it's lifted up high. 
He even matched my nails. Look at that. <laughs> I know people say that. Carol, do you match your nails before you do the, the project? No, I don't. It just happens. I probably have about three or four nail changes on this card. But uh, anywho, yeah, looks nice up till now. Everything is matchy-matchy. So I will take the hot glue gun. Be very careful if you're doing this. And um, I'll seat it all the way around, even on the top, wherever an opening was that you could see that double-sided tape, I filled it in with sequins, the sequin um, roll. And now, over top of that, that paper, I had some little buttons. Now, this button paper, you couldn't tell if you had the buttons on or you didn't have it on. That's how realistic this pattern looks. And I love the patchwork in it. It just seemed to break away from the butterflies and have its own existence there. And that's what I like on each element. I don't want them to all be in sync. Yet, I want it to flow in color and to um, really showcase each piece of paper. And yet it all matches, but it's different patterns. So I took my hot glue gun and I seat all, I sat, seated, <laughs> seated. I think that's it. I seated them all. And look at, I have that beautiful fold to the back to hold the card up. But because I put the sequins on, it is not going to fold flush. So you have to remember that if you add something like this, like I'm doing here on the top and all the way at the bottom, you're not going to get a flush um, closing. But I don't mind that look because I'm going to add ribbons and just having it fold over on top a slight bit to me gave it character. So it didn't bother me at all. And when you see what I did to close the card, I think you're really going to enjoy it. And uh, it's this simple. It, you know, creating something like this, the only involvement in it is time. You, you have to take your time. And I think it's worth, it's worth every minute that you do. Uh, you know, you still get the same creativity. You know, you're working your creativity. You're just working on one project. And... Um, it was a lot of fun to showcase little darling rubber stamps and uh, it, it was really exciting. I was so thankful I purchased that box because it just had every element and everybody knows me. I love to color little images and girl images and that kind of thing. I love my vintage cards and I love to create. I love to step outside the box, cover all my white cardstock, and have fun and get to meet new subscribers. All of it comes in the same package for me. So thank you very much. There's many ways to use this little folder, and I like it because it looks like a money pocket. Just a pretty vintage pocket to give a gift. A gift card, money, whatever you want to put in there. And... Uh, that's nice because you don't get many of these with, uh, you know, die stamp and die sets, and I'm glad I have it. And look at this heart. Um, on this, I used 140 pound cardstock, and I put a shim on there, and it really pressed it in. Yet it came out like nothing out of this Teflon coated uh, dies. So here I'm deciding. Okay, I'm going to cut that heart. But see these extra elements? Those are the elements for the flaps. So you have the top, beautiful um, filigree style opening. And then you have the two sides of the window, so to speak, as you can see there. I cut the one die for the envelope out of plain lilac paper. Actually, it has a little bit of dark to light. In the paper you can see it there where the heart is seated on top and I'm going to use that and then I'm going to die cut out of the one I want the windows to be available and I thought I actually did think of doing another shaker but I thought it'd be too much and I thought it would take away from the front of the card so I just uh, added some acetate you'll see that I'm just putting things in the sleeve so I can keep track of everything as I'm working and then we're going to move along. So I have the one envelope, 
that I cut the filigree pieces to the sides in the upper fold flap. Then I'm going to put the two side pieces to match the top fold and we'll run that through the die cutter. And you have yourself this beautiful uh, envelope and it's like a money pocket. That's what I see when I see it. A tag. It would be wonderful for that. And the dies would be wonderful to take the sides off to make like a fence in filigree. I've done that many times. It looks beautiful. So here we go. We're going to take these. Look at how nicely that comes off. And the die pieces just pop right out. And uh, if I like I said, the shim pushes <laughs> so far in, but I don't like taking my shim off my die cutter because I have it working perfectly to do deep set cuts. And uh, yeah, I don't mind poking them out of the die whatsoever. You could give it a little bang and they'd probably come off, but who wants to clean your floor, right? <laughs> so here we go. I have the purple cardstock. Uh, that is in my stash here and I love the way it goes from light to dark that you have that gradient it's very pretty and uh, yeah so we're gonna carry on I don't put the heart there because I decide to use it at look at that I'm putting the arrows on the side I mean so many possibilities but I realized I'm going to use it uh, as the back is going to be glued on so now we have to put more paper on. And I love, love, love these papers. Look at how distressed they look without even distressing them. I mean, it's gorgeous, especially if you like shabby chic vintage cards. And the cardstock is so nice and thick. You don't have to even add layers. But of course I did. So here's that beautiful purple paper that matched. And if you don't have paper that matches like this in your stash, all you do is take those beautiful hybrid inks and run across white cardstock and you can have the exact color that you put in, like on the two flip parts. So here I've put this one on, then I'm going to, I distress the edges of all the sides. So um, whether I distress them in a small way, or I really make some jiggity jaggedies. Uh, yeah, it really works. And then out came these this gorgeous roll that I've had forever in my stash of the sequins. So pretty because when you bend it into the light, see how you see that green? You see the beautiful, it matches perfectly to the hybrid inks. And then you have the purple, and then you have the pink. Oh yeah. So out come the polychromos. I had to do this. Now, here's where I love to create. I wanted to make a dog, a certain, kind of like a spaniel. A, a, uh, I was gonna say a spaniard. I wanted to make a spaniel. And they have curly tight locks. So I wanted my little Winnie to have curly like locks, the same as the dog. Winnie's gonna match her dog or the dog is gonna match Winnie, the little puppy. Either or, yes. So I started out just making all these little tight, tight curls in her hair. And you just take a multi-liner pen that is Copic friendly in that you have. And uh, this one, I'm not using Copics on this little Winnie and her dog, but uh, I think you're going to love the effect that they both match. And I remember once seeing this puppy. I don't know what it, what kind it was. I have a bull mastiff, but um, it had tight little curls. I'm just showing you here how I set my polychromos up. They come in uh, three sets like that. It works out perfect. Then we're going to move down to the coloring. So anyway, I was telling you about that dog. It had the tightest black and white, and mostly the white stood out, and it was so tightly curled. And so that's what I envisioned when I was doing the coloring on this. And the Polychromo is a beautiful pencil to work with. You know, it doesn't have the wax as my Prisma pencils. It is fabulous. Once you get your little hands on these, you really want to use them all the time. And it works with Gamsol, which is really nice. 
So here I'm setting the base. I want to keep it in. If you've watched my coloring tutorials, you know my underlayers are really important to me. Uh, if I'm doing the black hair, I like to put the yellows, the purples, the deep navy as an undertone. And that way when I put the deeper colors on, like this gray, and once you get your undertones down, you can come in with your multi-liner here and I'm going to add all of the curly cues back on top of the polychromo so that you can see through that when I add the Copic white. Actually, it isn't the Copic white. It is the uh, Uniball Signo broad pen, the white one. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add the pinks to the black because raven hair, black raven hair, has that tone when it gets in the sun of the purple, pinks, and yellows. Believe it or not, it really does. If you see somebody with beautiful raven black hair and you just put it in the right sunlight, just get it at the right angle, and you see these colors. And that's why I think doing an underlayer is so important. So now let's get out the Signal Broad uh, pen, the white pen, and the black pen. And as I see fit to make the uh, curves in her hair, I will add those lines of straight hair. And where I want it to wave, I'll wave it in a semicircle. So as you see me work here, I just wanted to show you where the part is. I want to make sure that you see the part. I want to leave a good angle on that with the white. But it's going to be curly. It's going to have this tight lock because I want her to exactly match the doggy. And uh, yeah, so just curly cue all the way down, you know. Uh, do not, you know, just ziggity, ziggity, ziggity circles. That's what I call it. Then I go back in with my deep purple, with my black. And there is no technique that you can actually share with somebody to do this. It is uh, something that you, over time, you get confident uh, with um, just experimenting. If it doesn't turn out, what's going to happen? Nothing. You're just going to add more layers and fix it up. <laughs> I never look at it like, oh no, you know, I, I'll just go over it and over it and uh, until I get the results that I want. So this is so funny. I was taking this beautiful <laughs> paper and I was setting it on top. And when my pen was giving me some problems over top of the pencil, yeah, I was testing it out on that paper, but it really didn't matter because I put ink over it and it was fabulous. Like I just uh, inked over the white and I had no problem with it. So anyway, if you're thinking, what are you doing, Carol? Yeah, I wasn't sure what I was doing. And here I come back in with the uh, navy. It's kind of a purple with a blue, navy blue hue to it. And I go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until I get the result that I want. And you want to make sure that all of the curves in the hair that you, when you're doing the white pen, just bringing it up there. I'll slow it down later. But you want to leave the spots where, you know, I wanted the hair to have waves. I wanted to have all this motion in it, like the dog. When you're looking at the little puppy, see how he has just, I made him to have all of these, I don't know, fluffy, curly, whatever's in it. And uh, that's what I'm doing here. And I'm adding the same colors, the same tones, all the undertones. Now, you may not see it on the camera, but in real life, when you tilt the little Winnie, you can see all those little uh, underlayers. And if I, you know, the video is long enough in itself. If it was just the coloring I had to present, I would have slowed it down much more so you could just see. But I think you can take the image that I stamped out and you can see the difference. It's like night and day. Then you just want to fill in low lights right next to those curly cues. Put the black and navy next to them so that they have, that's what gives it the movement. When you go behind it, 
and you put the dark tones, just like you would shade a flower. You want to do that with every curl. And then I'm going to do the matching colors on her little dress. She is so cute. And working with polychromos, I sometimes stay away from the Gamsol because I like to see that beautiful pencil shine through um, instead of, you know, doing that kind of melting texture that you get with Gamsol in the stump. So uh, here I'm just sorry about my hand being in the way. I'm just putting the dots on her dress. Then I'm going to move in with uh, coloring her face. Yeah, I always do. I always take the burgundy to put it on the curls. So right next to the black. And that way you can see the difference there. And, and see how the part, you have that poof on the right hand side. And you have all, it almost looks like ocean waves, doesn't it? It really does. Now I'm going to move in with the face. Love, love, love doing faces. Love to experiment. And it would look really nice to smooth it out with Gamsol, even though you're using polychromos. But I like to see the pencil uh, on there. I like to see all of the movement that you put into the face because the face our face isn't smooth like that. It does have its little dots and, you know, whatever. I mean, I'm not going to give her uh, zits or anything. <laughs> I don't think she's old enough right there. But it does have, you know, there's the pink. Oh, I love this uh, kind of uh, pastel pink that I used on the cheeks. It's so pretty, kind of the orange pink. Then I'll go back in, I'll lighten it up, I'll darken it up. And uh, the terrible thing is, see right there on her face, that little, that's a piece of her dress. And I didn't realize it there, but I did come back and that right there, I'm fixing it up. Yikes, I said, <laughs> that's the sleeve to her dress. And then I have to go back and see her little arm there. Yeah, I was trying to lighten it up with the bright white just to see what I could do. And uh, now I will go in and make the lines thicker because it was a mistake. And I like thick lines. I like going back and adding whatever I have to. I guess I didn't have to do very much. I gave her a little pearl necklace. And now I'll go in and try to fix, you know, the color of that so it doesn't look like I totally, you know, didn't remember. And I did fill in that little arm. You'll see me do that later. And I'm always going back on the hair. You know, it is important to me that it matches perfectly to the, to the little puppy. And now I gave her little round knobby knees, as you can see there. I like to see knees. And even if they're just little skinny legs, I like to see knees. Bee's knees. <laughs> I don't know what you call them, but I like it to look like she has some knees there. And you can see I did her arm, and now I'm going in with all the same colors. And I'll move back and forth. That's why I like stamping close by like this, uh, so that I can match up. Because I knew the little dog, the little puppy, was going to look identical to my um, little Winnie. She's adorable. Just adorable to color. And then I'll put, I put the little dot in the eye. I added some black. I didn't want to really accentuate the eye so much, you know, like adding some uh, nouveau black or, you know, making them large because I end up going in and adding a 3D. I end up making an indent and I'll show you how I do that. So here I wanted to have this little mustachey thing going on and dots all around the nose. I mean, this is the fun of creating. And this set, I'm telling you, you have to go and check out Little Darling Rubber Stamp Store. She carries everything. And that's Angie. Um, and Angie, if you're watching this, hello. <laughs> and you know, if you want to check out, I, I did make the eyes nice and dark here. Alexandra, I will put uh, her link in there to see if there's any more boxes to get like this kit that are available. 
I wanted to make the paws nice and black so that they stuck out and I added some purple into the snout and all over the place. I'm just going crazy, the whites in the eyes and then I'm going to make some curlicue fur all around my little puppy and this is where this puppy takes on character. I'll cut them out with the matching dies and run them through. You'll see that I cut it out with the dies on this one using the polychromo but my next set of Winnie and her little, uh, I think Alexander named him Wilbur. I'm not sure, but it was as cute as can be, whatever she named it. And here I'm just going to put it down with some micropore tape and run it through my die cutting machine. And this way I can see what the final image is going to look like. And I take it like to the max because, um, I don't know, I just take them personal, like this is my little doggy and that's my little wee image of Winnie that I want to come alive. Now I took a piece of uh, foam and what I am doing here, I'm just taking a round ball stylus and I'm going to push in the face right there. I'm going to go around it so I can see the edge of the face. Just make the markings and I want her to look 3D. So I do her legs and I do the face and her little shoulder and now I'm going to come in with my um, my gloss, it's not glossy accents, it's the black that I want her to have black enamel shoes. So I take my needle to move it, you know, to move it around. Oh yeah, I came out of the line there. So I'm fixing that up and when you see it on the side, her little shoulder, face and legs just poof right out. I just love it. So here I'm making the markings on the dog. You can see it. You can see clear through on the paper. Even though my cardstock's 140, my white cardstock, you can see the image. That uh, beautiful black ink that came with this set is wonderful. The little Darling Rubber Stamp ink and now I'm going to use my stylus to push in what I want to stand out and that's the paws and the little snout. Isn't he cute? And I'm telling you it does uh, produce this pronounced uh, pop on uh, it looks so realistic it really does and I'm really happy you know, I know it takes me a long time to do my tutorials. I spend hours and hours. But um, when you love something, that's what you do. And this is the box that I bought. It's not a, a design team. Oh, did I say design team? Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> I have been so excited from the day I found out that I would be designing for Little Darling Rubber Stamps. Yes. And this isn't a design team project. It is, I am doing some. There is some more videos coming out that aren't long like this. And I am just over the moon excited and that uh, Angie Hunt uh, accepted me as a design team member. So thank you again, Angie, and thank you to Alexandra for her support. And... Um, yeah, and for your support. I, I didn't know when I was going to throw that in there because I've been waiting and waiting waiting to tell you, but I couldn't keep it in any longer. So here we're going to build the box. I added a half, it's six and a half by six and a half inch card. So I added another inch around that to make the box. So whatever size your card is, add another inch and then you're going to take out the corners and you want to use something really thick. I almost do a V on every corner slot, like every score mark, you want to cut a V because you're going to put one of the sides behind and one in the front. So here's the lid, did the exact same thing. And the lid, I'm going to make a little tighter. So I eliminated a quarter of an inch. So here I am scoring it at one inch all the way around like I did with the box. And uh, I just cut it off uh, smaller, just a quarter of an inch smaller. 
going around. I want to do um, a see-through panel on the box lid for this card. So what you're seeing here, I'm taking the dies of that envelope and putting it on either side and then I'm going to put acetate behind it. I was going to put um, uh, vellum, but the vellum, oh yes, I, I'm, I need my Coca-Cola right there, just a little sip. <laughs> and uh, I wanted this to match the front of the card. I wanted it to be side by side, so to speak. So I ran that through, and isn't it beautiful? And look at all that you can do with one die. I mean, one die set. It's not just an envelope. It expands to so many other things. I'm going to show you that as we move forward. And if you're still with me, thank you so much for staying with me. I know some of my subscribers, a lot of them, they want long video tutorials. So because this wasn't a design team project and I'm just showing you the beautiful kit that I ordered over at uh, Hedgehog Hollow, I thought, you know what, I am going to take my, I am going to take it down to whatever I feel is needed to see the development of this card and card box. So see this pink vellum? I didn't like it for two reasons. I didn't like it because it didn't showcase the uh, filigree opening there on the flaps that I used, the die flaps. I didn't like it that way. So I just cut it out, put it over top of some acetate, cut it out, and then I'm going to switch up and I'll use the, the uh, vellum on something else. And the acetate looked beautiful. And I love using the orange tape to put it down because it's nice and sticky. You can't use, I've never used uh, liquid glue. Some people get good results with liquid glue, but I love this orange tape. I keep it uh, for using with acetate. My sister just dropped by and uh, I showed her this card and uh, box to match and she absolutely swooned over it. She loved it and she also brought my mail. <laughs> So I set that aside. I know you can't bring me mail like this. I'm in the middle of a card. Yeah, so look at me. I'm opening it up. I couldn't stand it. Be but I did put it away. Yes, sorry. <clears throat> I was about to cough. I have a bit of a sore throat this week. So anyway, you're going to see how I V the corners out like that. So all on the, when you score it, the inside score mark you make a V on each corner. And then I'll use the orange tape here. But I'm also going to leave something in here that's going to help you if the lid to your box is too small. Now, for some strange reason, while I'm cutting this out, I'll tell you, it ended up being about a sixteenth of an inch smaller than I needed it. I needed to make it expand it a little bit and I've made many a box like this and I have the perfect solution if the lids are too tight I think you're gonna love it. I showed a friend it we were FaceTiming and I showed it to her because she makes a lot of these boxes. See how I couldn't get it to fit quite right and I was pushing it. I mean yes it would see it was ripping on the corner and I thought, okay, no problemo. I don't mind this because there's always a solution. Always. You could, don't throw anything out. You know how I say that. Just let it go and think on it and something will come up. You will find a, a way to resolve it. You know, no problem is left undone. So what I'm going to do here before I show you what I did I'm going to get out some paper flowers to add to the front of the box. And um, yeah, it's like you have to go into your stash for some things. And I think these flowers just made this box sparkle. It made the card shine because on the front of the flaps you have flowers. And they're this beautiful lilac color and this off-white and then I took the Tim Holtz little flowers, that the little blooms that he has. I took my handy dandy glue, 
begun and I put them in, but not before I noticed, you know what, I need to add some color. So I put uh, the La La Lavender and the pink down on my mat and I am going and I sprayed it with water and I'm going to dip the little flowers into the green green and, and the la la lilac actually and I'll show you how I did that I think I kept it in the video and I wanted to add some little pearls I mean if you have vintage you have to have little pearls right and I thought it was so cute because my little Winnie had a pearl necklace on I went back and put pearls around that you'll see it when the card is finished I put pearls on the end of her skirt and these are the little details that you pick up and you do after you've looked at the project you always go back and you will find different ways to just make whatever creation you're doing and little darling rubber stamps I'm telling you I have some in my stash um, before you know, I was asked that, well, not asked, before I was accepted to design for Angie Hunt and Little Darling Rubber Stamps, I ha I went into my stash and I had a fair amount uh, from, I'd say, three or four years ago that I had bought. And I just love coloring those images. And here's that heart. And I put some Lala Lavender over top. Lavender Lavender. It's like tomato or tomato, right? <laughs> yes, and I snuck that in behind the flowers. I made the flowers go on a backwards C, kind of look like a J, kind of. And here I'm just going around and, okay, I have to open this up. So this is what I did. You take some ribbon that's the same size as that one inch that's going around. So I need a one inch ribbon. You tuck a piece under one corner. Now, when you cut your corners to extend it, you only cut one corner and then you angle it and cut it on the opposite corner. See how I'm snuggling that inside? You don't do, you do opposite corners, like on an angle. You don't do the one next to it. You, you wrap it around there, there, stop. Then you go right there and you start again and you tuck it. And then you go all the way around, only glue it on the edges, nowhere else. Leave it nice and clean going around the one inch perimeter. Leave it nice and clean. Then, you know, you've just added glue there. Then you're going to come here and you're going to fold it in because you're finished. Okay, so you cut the each angle out. You just cut it up, straight up. And then you're going to add the ribbon and this is what is going to make it fit. You're going to make sure you cut two pieces to put over the two angled sides that are open that are one and a half inches. And if you don't need the full one and a half inch, you don't have to use it. You can use an inch, but you need to put that cover over top with your card in it. Then put those extra pieces on. And what I did to cover the two lines on the ribbon is I put some flowers. And I took that beautiful ink and I daubed it. Excuse me. Talk about dogs, right? Yes. I had to add mine. So uh, you're just going to dab it with a little dabber here. Just an inexpensive sponge I put on the clip. And there. I took the Luscious LDRS inks and I just tapped the color on and we are I'm just looking at it there excuse me <laughs> I was seeing what colors I had put on it you you just have yourself a beautiful two beautiful edges two corners your box will fit perfect with your project inside with the card and that completes it actually and I put some pearls going down to match the pearls and I'm really happy that it has this beautiful box to contain a beautiful card. There you have it. We use the dies to make that with the envelope die and pow! Wonderful project, don't you think? <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, I don't finish a project unless I'm really happy with it. I'm not going to put it out, right? <laughs> 
on YouTube if I'm not happy with it. So let's be honest, I was just excited that it came out, you know, nicely, pretty, and that's what my goal was. Now here is the kitty corner edges that we made and split and added some of this beautiful ribbon too. I'm just going to give you a close up with the little pearls. Then we're going to move on to some Copic coloring with the other images. I thought I would put two. Now we will start with the face. I'm going to zoom in. You see I only use six markers for the face. So I will try to put them in there. I'm sorry that one didn't show up, but I will leave them over on my blog. So it looks like I'm using the E51 here. And I wasn't looking into my monitor to see what I was using. And I didn't look there either. <laughs> looks like the E53 to me, if I'm right. I try to stay with the same family. And I'm remembering when I do this, the dog is going to match little Winnie. So the whole time here, I'm concentrating on a look that will match the dog. And both of them will be um, a match. So then I move on to the E57. I love this combination when doing skin tones. So I'm sure it was the E51, E53, and E57. I'm going to make the edges for the nose with the 57. And then I'm going to move underneath to the bottom of her chin. And it's all experimental. We're going to go into the dark tone. And now I can't see which one that is unless I slow my hand down. I should have zoomed it up so you could see the caps, but I will go back and leave that for you. Now I'm going back with a lighter shade so that I can do the corners. It's probably the E57. And uh, yeah, and then it looks kind of odd right there, but I like to keep that little hue of sunlight that would come down on her face. Everything will be central on this. And then I go back and take the edges off, working with the same markers all the time. And here you can see the edge of her nose nicely. I'm going to come in with more of an orange tone to just bring this alive and take the dark edge off. So I will come in here. You can see it almost melting into the uh, cardstock as I'm going, which is nice, very pretty, I think. And now we'll move on. I'll go over it again. And this is a light, light tone. I'm pushing back right now. I very seldom use the zero. I push back with uh, E51, I think that was, and I come back with the E57, and I'll bring that in, and I'll just keep going over it. That's the beauty of Copics. You can go over, if your paper will stand it, and this is a heavy weight paper I'm using, if it's a Copic friendly paper, you're going to be able to come back many times. And here I'm just doing the, uh, I always forget that little arm. I will get it later, but I want to make sure that I get, there it is, added a little bit to her shoulder there, and I will keep working this until I'm satisfied with her look. And I know I'm going to use these same browns when I come in, so I want to get that little spot of sunlight on her face, more to the right, and her nose will block a bit, as you can see, to the left, so you don't want that as wide as the right side. You want to remember that it's going to be less kissed by the sun because the nose is going to block it if you're going to put the light more so on the upper right. So here we go. We'll just keep working it and working it. And I just wanted you to see this part of doing that and then I will speed it up. But I know I like to watch the way people do their skin tones when they're coloring. Here's the E55. And I'll go in. Don't you just love watching it just seep into the cardstock? There's just something about that I like. And uh, then I'm going to go back and make sure that the nose is not as widely pronounced, but yet it's there. And you can see that she has a visual, you know, nose. And yeah, 
So I just keep pushing it and pushing it. You can't do wrong when you work with Copics. Just lighten it up. Now I'm starting the same process with our little puppy. So I'll start in with the same colors as I started with the face. I'm going to set down a base and it's really good to saturate your cardstock with a base. And uh, then I'll come in with a little darker tone and come up until I decide where I want all of the hairs to be. You know, the hairs to be, yes. Because I'm going to have to let the hairs to be be on the little Winnie as well. So I'm kind of uh, thinking, you know what I'll do? I'll do the dog first this time. And then I'll match her hair after I've finished the little puppy. And so that is my goal. Then I will speed it up here so you don't have to watch the whole process. And we'll move forward. I decided right here to keep this portion, but just to speed it up some, to show you that when you take your markers and you go down to your darker tones, like the E59 here, you want to do the underneath part. So the chin, you want to do everything that you don't want to look like it's been kissed by the sun. And the areas that you do want it to shine, I'm going to use the YR24 because it's more of that mustard color. And then I'll go back to the E59 and I want to lift the tip up of the Copic marker so that I can get some fine lines. Just hold that marker almost that it's just touching the paper and give it those flicking motions, uh, holding it straight up and down. After this, I'm going to use a face cloth that has all those fibers in it and my Copic blender solution, my zero blender solution, here we are. You can slow that down, but I'll leave that. So here's the type of face cloth or towel you want to use and then your Copic Colorless Blender solution, the one that you put inside your zero marker when you fill it up. And you're going to put it at the end of the tip of your face cloth, in my case. And you're gonna pour some of it on there and that's how you're gonna texturize her face and you're gonna texturize that little puppy. You're gonna give it the those little nubbies in the face cloth are going to make texture and you're going to have it so that the face has a little bit of the same texture and I put the bow there but you know what when I do the hair I don't want to lose the part so here you go just tap 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 on the little puppy and you'll see the difference it makes right away you get the little fibers hold it down and it gives you close up you won't believe it it actually looks like dog hair and, you, and it's fibrous and it's beauteous. And you do the same thing there on her face, just one little tap, and it moves the colors back, that, that Copic uh, blender solution. It's just fabulous. I love doing it on animals. It gives you that wonderful texture. Then I'll go back in with the dark, and I'll start the hair really quickly. This Now, the hair is gonna look like the doggy, right? We're always gonna remember that the puppy hair is going to match Winnie's hair. So the YR14 over top of any bright yellow Copic marker that you have. And then I'll tone, tone it down with the E55. And then I'll go back in and I'll do this back and forth until I'm happy with the color. And you also want to tip your Copic marker when you get to the darks to run with the the, the way that the design was in the hair, like the bang coming down. And you want to leave your highlight marks. And you also want to separate the part in her hair. And you want to put movement in there as well, you know, still leaving the dark on her skin tone underneath where the sun would not hit. Don't darken up the bang or around her face darker than what the dark is you put in for her shading on her face. I always try to remember that. The YR14 will come in, but then I'm going to add some orange and red tones in there. I'm going to do the same with the dog. That's the YR09. I'll come in with that, and I had to move it quite fast or we would be spending the day together. <laughs> It's already an hour and a half. I've got it down to an hour and a half. 
So um, yeah, so here I'm just going in and I'm going to make all the movement and the little hairs that I want because I do like it to look real and I like it to just look natural, but yet fluffy like our little puppy. And here's the E49, which I will go underneath all of those lines to give it some dimension. I'll add the yellow because I am going to use the R24, so I am bringing in an orange red. And uh, I'm going to put the same color on her dress. I'm going to grab the white signal pen to add some uh, brightness on that bow. I'm going back in to make sure the hair matches the puppy hair and the little sun kiss on his schnout. I'm going to dot all this dress to just bring it out. I'm going to do the same thing with the bow, the same colors. And then, I don't know if I put it in here, but I did puff out with my styling ball. I did puff this out so it stuck off and had some dimension. I didn't leave it flat. I wanted it to, uh, yeah, there. Oh yeah. Even though you cover up his little paw, Oh, he's cute. Yes, the dress and the bow then accentuate each other, don't they? And then I'm adding the black shiny shoes, the patent leather shoes with my crystal effects. Going to add some shine to the bow and to the dress and everything. Yeah, I'm trying to remember this is puffed out now. I did uh, put texture in it and I did raise it up by putting it on top of the foam and pressing down into the bowl with my stylus. I used the small ball end for this. Now once I'm happy with the colors and I know Winnie matches her little puppy, I am content. I put the little white marks on her eyes and we're going to move on to the sentiments. I did have some matching purple um, embossing powder. So I wanted to put it two tones, so I put the purple and the pink on my sentiments because it did match the hybrid ink colors, the purple and the pink, the lavender, the la la lavender. Color is wonderful, isn't it? I just love it. And now I'm going to heat set it. You have the pink and purple. You just, uh, yeah, wait till you see it all come together. And you need to have the, all of the sentiments. I stamped all the sentiments because I'm going to have a money card in there. One of the sentiment is going to act for sliding the money underneath. And I think it's furry fabulous here that I'm going to use for that. So once it's heat set, I'm going to set that aside. Now for the little dog dish, I'm going to put it in Versamark, some silver embossing powder. I'm going to dip it twice so it's nice and thick. And I wanted to show you you don't have to worry about not having any marks there. Now, I don't want the bone in this, but I do want the line showing that there's water in here. So just take your point of your stylus and go right down in the embossing powder when it's warm. You know, you have to hang on to it, so try not to when it's totally hot, but when it's warm and you will get that line back in there, which is great. In the background, I took one of these hearts and I cut the little jaggedy edges off. I held it on and I used my Copic air compressor, put two markers, two grays and a lilac, and I followed the hearts to make it look like heart clouds in the background. Then I added the heart dies and I distressed the edges with the dark, with the lilac. I put some of the little flowers down with the hybrid black ink and now I put a bone on the front of the dog dish separately and that is complete. And I love the clouds in the background. I added some arrows that are in the set. I distressed this furry-licious because they do look furry-licious, don't they? All that fluffy fur and actually they're furry fabulous. Even better, isn't it? Raise it up a little bit in the center. This isn't the money pocket, so I just held it there for a little bit. And that is the back of the card. That's the flap. That's the third flap. And whatever you see you want to correct, you just go in. I wanted to use my Copics just on a few of the flowers. Leave some of the flowers original. Just color, I'd say, three of them, five of them, some odd number. 
and uh, get right in there with the gray and the lilac and then it looks complete. You have the heart puffy clouds in the background, then you have them in the forefront and I think it's just beautiful. I put some pearls in the center of the um, flowers there, the matching pearls. I'll go over it with some of the Nouveau Glaze and bring it out and I am satisfied with the back page. And I think the, um, the matching sequence going around with that roll from my stash gives it that extra oomph to the back of the card. I love the shaker elements on the sides there, which will be the front of the card. And there's a close up. And you can see how I pushed out the face and the snout of the little puppy and all is great there. And this is where you're going to write your sentiment on the inside. I did leave one blank spot and that's right there because I thought it'd be nice to uh, write something on the inside flap, which I generally don't do, but I thought, you know what? So many pages of this white cardstock is covered and that is two actually, but it would look nice with a centered um, and what I like to do when I write a sentiment is I will die cut the center out and put down the page like die cut it so that I can write and it looks like it's in an oval or a circle when you're writing and you're writing on the inside of a die cut. So you can keep that in mind when you're adding your own personal sentiment. That looks awfully nice. Well, I hope everybody has a smile on their face when we've gone this far. Happy smiles, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's so long that I had to throw some happy smiles in there. So here I just glued down the fronts onto that uh, solid piece of paper that I put on the inside. I'm going to add some of the glaze so that it looks like glass to the outside. And this is my money pocket where I'm going to put a gift card or, you know, you can slide a few dollars in there whatever you would like and this is awful nice because you can use this now for any occasion card whether uh, it be for like I said before the friendship for just saying hello whatever it is uh, the sentiments give way so you can use it for just about anything and I think it is very bright and cheery and that's what we're going for. And the hybrid inks are wonderful. So I put, have a woof you day. Woof you. Woof woof. You know, the little puppies. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting tired too. <laughs> that's okay. That's what voiceovers do. And you know, you have to stop, start, stop, start. And just make sure that, uh, you know, I, that you know how excited I am to design. Can you imagine, like I'm designing for Little Darling Rubber Stamps? Wow, that's amazing. I'm so thrilled. And don't forget, this card is not, I love the buttons. I found these little buttons to put over top of the buttons, remember? And I'm placing little Winnie up on the woof you sentiment. So she looks like she's standing up there and her face is puffed out and her legs are puffed out and the doggy snout is puffed out and everything is just cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, have a woof you day could be birthday. Yeah, it could be birthday. Happy woof day. It almost sounds like birthday, doesn't it? And here comes that little bow, which isn't so little. I think he's darling. I just love it. Now I'm just going to showcase the back, the two sides, and this is the money holder, the little envelope. We're going to put that down so that a bill can slide in under it and everything will be complete. I think it's so cute. I'm just gonna add some tape where the bend is. I'm gonna fold this over on the bottom, add some 16th of an inch double-sided tape all the way around here because I'm going to put acetate on the back of that filigree flap on the top and here I'm going to add some glue and my paper 
And I decided to go with the paper here and add the glaze. I thought it was a really nice look to have the flap with acetate and the sides with glaze. I think it's, uh, you know, when a person's given to detail, <laughs> it can work both ways, right? You know, it can be a good thing and then you know, it can be a drive you crazy thing because you want to always um, add that little extra, you know. Well, how many extras can you have, really? <laughs> there has to be a stopping point, right? You know, where you just say, okay, that's it. And uh, anywho, yeah, totally loved designing this card and box. I really did. And I thank you very much if you're still with me. We have a few minutes left. I'm going to put the acetate on the top, peel it off, and it is going to be fabulous. So here I want to add some paper on the inside because I have the acetate, right? You have to cover it. Otherwise, you see the tape on the side. So I just set some double-sided tape down, put the paper I wanted to use right over top, and cut around it. Yeah, you die cut it. Anywhere on the on the six by six paper pad, just die cut it, set it down so it's perfectly over top of this die on the envelope, and then cut around it, and then you have a perfect fit. It's easier than trying to cut it to size when you do it that way. I want to add some more um, stability, so I cut out this little quarter inch panel, folded it in half. And it works as the same thing as putting a gusset on it, making it reliable for the bend. And I put that on the back so that you can open, close, open, close, and it's fine. I'm going to add a couple of pearls there, as you can see. Just I put glaze over top of my pearls. That way it gives it security. The pearls are not going to fall off in the mail. I always put that on. Just a little teeny dab, let it soak down in and it will secure your pearls or whatever else you're putting on. Here comes the glaze on all of these little die cuts. Beauteous, isn't it? And now I need to add the ribbon. So I put some double-sided tape on the back, add some thin ribbon, just some thin white ribbon out of your stash to close it. And there you have it. The, I'm going to put the flap on the inside, right like that. And then I'm going to close it with the bow because I'm going to have that on the outside. So once I get that done, I'm going to secure it with some good liquid glue. Once I get all of the goobers out of the top, there you go. There, it's coming out perfectly. And then I'm going to seat that. Gives me some wiggle room and I'm going to move on to the front. I die cut two more hearts out of the matching paper. I took that beautiful lime color for the edges. Now, when I seat this, I need to put the ribbon on it. So you only want, you want the ribbon all the way across. Don't skimp and put it on the edge, see? Put the double-sided tape on and then put your ribbon because you're going to be pulling on this, opening, closing, opening, closing. So I'm going to put the glue all over. I'm going to seat it so it's off the edge like that. See that? It's not full, it's just to the edge of the actual uh, paper there that's running down on the left side. I'm going to do the same with the other side. What you do to one side, you do to the other side. And then I'm going to put glaze over top of it so it hardens. So my ribbon will be secure with that glaze and the paper being nice and thick as it is, it's going to translate into something even thicker. So I'm just measuring it to make sure that they're both the same size. I have enough time because I used the liquid glue. I had to remove that, move it over, and there you have it. Yeah, measure both of them on this side, and there you go. You can also use your T-square. That'll work as well, but I had my measuring tape right there. And I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. I thank you. I thank all my subscribers. And I would ask you that you go over to the store and check it out or over on Hedgehog Hollow and see if, if you like this uh, exclusive set, if they're still available to purchase, if you like it. And this is what you can do with it. So many possibilities. It's endless. Just endless. I also took out my beads and I made a beautiful hat pin. And I did it with a teacup because I know Alexandra likes her tea and I like my tea. And I thought... 
you know, with this box that uh, Hedgehog Hollow put out, that Alexander put out, it would be a nice way to end this tutorial and have a teapot hat pin. So I will add that and I thank you for subscribing as always. I thank you for your support. I thank you for your thumbs up and your likes. It means a lot to me and more so your comments so I can get to know you when you spend time in my craft room with me. So I hope you liked this. Uh, enjoy the pictures. I'll tie it all up for you and we will see you on the next tutorial.